attack the king, maybe or capture pieces of the opponent, etc. But always make sure that your own pieces are well supported, you are well grounded. Hey guys, uh, I'm Sachin. I am the co-founder of Scribe. We were in the Y Combinator Winter 17 batch, and just a few months ago we got acquired by Rippling. And welcome to Backstage with Millionaires. So for the video, I want to discuss a particular framework that has helped me a lot through the journey of, uh, through my journey as an entrepreneur, and that is about chess, mapping startup strategizing to chess. Uh, I do. Uh, I, this, I, I do this mostly because I was a professional chess player and was extremely active during my school and college days in the chess circuits. And I think yeah, I have invested a lot of time in chess and startups. And I think, therefore, you know, there is, I can see there's a lot of correlation that I possibly can highlight here and might be of help to you guys as well. Each game of chess is unique in itself, right? You definitely have to come prepared to the game. But you also know that your opponent is as as much prepared or more than you, and yeah, I mean you never know when it's the right time. How much preparation is a good preparation because it's relative to how much your opponent is getting prepared. So more often than not, when you see, think you are decently comfortable, you definitely have to launch in. But yeah, you need to always be aware of the fact that there is no parallels that you can always follow. Like your game is always different from every other game, right? And then. You also need to definitely never underestimate your opponent. Right? In, in a game of chess, you don't just start the game with a plan up front and you're like, oh, I will do these moves and the opponent will never know that and so I will win. That never happens, right? That never happens. So you, uh, at each point in, point in the game, you always play with, with the idea that you are overall increasing your positional strength in the game. And over time, in, as you incrementally keep improving your position, perhaps you come to an advantageous position wherein you you can force your opponent to make a mistake. You will always have to believe that your opponent will not make a mistake on his own. If he does, that's great, you have hit a jackpot. But if he doesn't, then in order to force the opponent to uh, make a mistake, it takes a lot of incremental uh, improvements to improve your own positional strength in the game. right? And that's very much true with startups too. You definitely uh, need to make a lot of small correct decisions which will lead to finally being in that position wherein you can tame the market. You possibly, you know, to start with might might want to get the right founding team early into the game, right? You might want to decide the market which you are most comfortable with. Even before thinking of product market fit, there is the founder market fit, founder product fit, which are way more critical and you know that mostly drives the later PM fits that come in. Right. So you want to make sure you are in the uh, you are choosing the right markets, you are trying to build the right product and you definitely have to time it extremely well. The, ga the game is all about timing, right? And that, if you want to be correct on, then you need to, of course, build up your own strengths. Like you need to understand the market and of well, you need to understand the product and of well. Over time, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of grunt work before you can actually be in a position wherein you can go big, you can basically, uh, yeah, you need to build that ne networks in place, build the relations with customers in place. And only if you have that, then I think, yeah, you can definitely go try to tame the market. And it's going to be a long haul. It's definitely going to be a long haul. St uh, starting up is just the first move. Then you have many, many hours to go before you can even see the game through, right? Uh, so yeah, it's, it's not that straightforward at all. And the other uh, piece wherein I think uh, just as a strong equivalent, you know, at least the way I play, with uh, starting up is I, when I go into a game, the idea is not to win it, the idea is to not lose it, right? The, every opponent uh, you believe is just as strong or better than you. And so you aim to at least get the draw. And of course, over time you keep improving. And yeah, if you have a good strong position, you go for the win, right? And that's, I think something equally applicable to startups too. You, you can't just aim that, oh, I will build a billion dollar company tomorrow. That's a, that's a extremely bad notion to start with. What you would rather want to do is, can I survive the long haul? Can I build a company and not lose, you know, I don't have significant opportunity cost. I can still make the money that I'm making. Even now, I can still have the impact that 
I continue to have and build upon that step by step. And hopefully uh, uh, in the big picture, you might actually have a big impact, might make the next billion dollar company, but that's not how you even start. Uh, you definitely want to survive the game. And if you survive for long enough, possibly you will win it. The other piece wherein I think uh, it's, no, startups are, uh, mapping a startup chess helped me a lot is, well, one mistake in a game of chess costs you mostly the game more often than not, right? You don't, uh, you don't have the option to make too many blunders. Uh, small mistakes, yeah, you possibly will survive out a blunder and it's mostly game over. And often you can struggle it out and maybe prolong, prolong it. Or you can, of course, start again fresh start a new game with the learnings. Uh, more often than not, then, uh, people uh, who are uh, well-versed, who have been um, in the circuits for long as a chess player, they know that once you have made a mistake, once you have understood the market well, then you know that, hey, uh, it's game over. Like, let me just try again fast. And there's nothing wrong about that. It's very common. Like, there's absolutely nothing embarrassing about uh, you know, pivoting fast, shutting down fast, trying again. It's, it's, the, it's how the actual world is, like the game is that, you know, you are in it to, yeah, I mean, struggle it out. If you can't win it, yeah, you can get out and start again. Nothing wrong about that, right? And the other piece that I often, uh, again, uh, relate back to chess when I'm making additional startup is, well, you have to incrementally keep improving your positional strength. Like you have a game of, of, of your board and you want to make sure you capture the centers very fast. Your pieces are... You know, double down the support on your pieces. You definitely want to go attack the king, but you never want to weaken your own king. And, you know, that's the step one of uh, the rule one of the game. Make sure your, your defenses are correct. And once you have that, then go ahead, go try to uh, attack the king, maybe uh, capture pieces of the opponent, etc. But always make sure that your own pieces are well supported, you are well grounded. And I think that's very true for startups too. You definitely want to make sure uh, that you have the right team in place. Your bank account is always, you have, the, you have enough runway to survive any, any sudden uh, developments that might happen. Never ever you know, uh, risk your team or your funding so much that you, know, you don't have an option to fall back on. Right? And always expect your opponent to play something new or that you possibly have not seen. And yeah, make sure that when that unforeseen development happens, you still are in a position to survive it out and beat it. So there's one other thing, right? It's very common in chess. There are two types of players. There's one person who is who plays extremely on the position itself. There might be a, a set of moves that you might make wherein you have a very high probability that uh, you know you will possibly gain a piece, gain a pawn, or get a free pass or convert a queen. But there is a slight risk that the opponent might be waiting for you to do that. And you know you have weakened your own defenses because of that. And he might go aggressively around that. Right? In those cases, there are some players who take the bet, who they are, they are mostly called the combinational players. They try a, try a combination. If the opponent doesn't see it, well, you have won the game right then. Uh, but if the opponent sees it, then you possibly have, yeah, then you possibly have lost the game just as much. Then the other set of players were the positional players who, even though they see the upside, they still play incremental improvements. They don't go all in. Instead, they are like, hey, I can see there's a conventional uh, upside there, but I will still play the more safer moves that I know will definitely not put me in jeopardy. And then I will try to, uh, I mean, uh, I will try to go beat the opponent later, right? Uh, as as you go higher up in the uh, chess hierarchy, the best players, the most of the grandmasters, they're almost always positional players because combinations never work because your opponents always see what's coming. So it's mostly positional players who win the games as you go up into the hierarchy, right? So, but it also tells you what kind of a person you are. I was always a positional player. So I knew that I would be more comfortable with the decisions that improve my position incrementally than take big big bets. And that gives me clarity on how I should think about think about startups too, because I know what kind of person I am. So I will take similar decisions when it comes to startup as well.
and i think that when you have such frameworks in mind wherein you can map things correctly then i think yeah there is conviction in the decisions you make because of that and those convictions are very important like it might be a wrong decision or a right decision but if you have conviction more often than not you can take it forward to the, your end goal your end destination you can still make it through that thanks for watching this guys uh hope this was helpful uh if you think that this as a framework is useful to any of your other entrepreneurial friends definitely do share with the, share it with them if you have any questions or comments uh, about this video or about the work i did before about my community about starting up in us about scribe etc definitely uh, do let us know i would love to get back to you on that yeah i mean uh, quite fast and yeah uh, all the best with your a uh, startup journey i yeah uh, make it fun it's more important to be fun